Sri Lanka has a treasure trove of 25 lighthouses, including one of the tallest in Southeast Asia at Dondrayan. It towers 160 meters and was built in 1889 on the southernmost tip of Sri Lanka. The oldest is the Gaul Lighthouse, dating to the 19th century, although it was replaced due to a fire in 1939, looming at 26.5 meters. And then there's Colombo's Lighthouse, built in 1952. It's 29 meters tall. Welcome to Kaleidoscope with me, Savitri Rodrigo. We have an exciting show lined up for you, all made possible due to our amazing partners, Skills for Inclusive Growth and Australian Aid, Selinko Life, CDB and The Morning Newspaper. If you like our show, don't forget to subscribe or follow us and like us. We are on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. Did you know you can open a digital fixed deposit with just 5,000 rupees? Open a CDB iDeposit digital fixed deposit today. CDB, your friend. We start off with our weekly news roundup on CDB Snapshot. The Sri Lankan government is to present Budget 2023 with an estimated total expenditure of 7.9 trillion rupees, an increase from this year's approved overall expenditure of 4.67 trillion. The government aims to contain fiscal deficit to 6.8% of GDP from the projected 9.9% this year, while government revenue is forecast to increase to 11.3% of GDP from this year's projected 9.1%. Sri Lanka's alcohol consumption plummets to 120 million litres from January to July this year, from 215 million litres for the same period in 2021. Australia is to set aside at least 30% of its land mass for the conservation of endangered species. An Indian toy factory recycles fibre from cigarette filter tips to create soft toys and pillows. The USA's heaviest pumpkin this year is 2,554 pounds. on your goals. We will take care of the risks. Silly go life. And it's time for our Selling Good Life news capsule. Exporters are facing challenging times. With a corporate taxation of 30% slated from November this year, general instability and global inflation rising, the export barometer is not looking good. The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, in collaboration with USAID, recently surveyed 157 exporters, predominantly SMEs and 20% women-owned or led, publishing the third in the Export Barometer Survey series. Revealing some findings is Chief Economist of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, Shiran Fernando. Shiran, welcome and thank you for joining us. What were the key findings of this survey? Uh, the key findings from this survey is that uh, exporters are ex uh, their views on in terms of the economic outlook as well as their exporters uh, export orders are deteriorating um, quite significantly in particular their outlook for the second half of, of 2022. Uh, this is a significant shift from the previous survey where uh, the outlook on export orders in particular was much more brighter. Um, we're also seeing from the survey that larger firms are showing much more resilience uh, compared to SMEs. In terms of the key issues, uh, the uh, electricity, the power, the fuel shortages had definitely hampered um, the exporters as well. And going forward, export firms uh, requested more stability in this side of it, as well as uh, more stability on the political side so that uh, there can be uh, the export momentum seen in the first half of 2022 could be continued as well. Taking a look at our markets, Sri Lanka's stocks continued its downward spiral this week. The all share price index moved down by 8.2% with the average daily turnover at 3.1 billion rupees. 
The decision by OPEC plus this week to cut its November production quotas by 2 million barrels per day pushed WTI oil to 87.80 US dollars per barrel. While this week gold prices rose slightly to 1723 US dollars per ounce as US Treasury yields dipped. Kaleidoscope collaborated with Cinnamon Grand for World Tourism Day with a thought-provoking discussion at Nugagama on rethinking and regenerating tourism in Sri Lanka. One of the topics for discussion was marketing and promoting Colombo as a singular destination rather than in the entire package of Sri Lanka. One of the panelists was the president of the Colombo City Restaurant Collective, Harpo Gunaratna. Colombo is never marketed separately, it's always part of the package deal for Sri Lanka. What would make Colombo a worthwhile stopover for a traveller coming in? I would think it will be mainly food and entertainment, you know. I think we need to have more entertainment venues, more entertainment, uh, you know, designated areas. Like in Singapore, you get Orchard Street and stuff like that. Bangkok, you get various designated areas. I think Colombo lacks a lot when it comes to entertainment, you know. And uh, you, when you look at it, Colombo is dead Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It basically picks up maybe it's a weekend country. Isn't Colombo sort of a a longer than a one night stand literally. You see there are lots of things Colombo, within Colombo uh, we can offer you know like I said the museums we have here, the old railway station we have here, the old churches we have you know, around the fort, uh, the lovely beautiful hotels which has a lot of history you know like the old uh, the Grand Oriental Hotel which has so much of history I think those should be uh, you know those should be marketed like I said there's so much to offer within Colombo you know. While we do love having our artwork displayed in our homes, Sam Cox, otherwise known as Mr. Doodle, turned every inch of his $1.5 million mansion in Kent into a canvas for his doodles. Up next is S4IG Let's Talk with award-winning actress, model and co-founder of The Upside Space, Lisa Ray. Art has a way of making the very ground we stand on vibrate with emotion. It's magnetic, it's thought-provoking and responsive. That responsiveness is brought out in Sri Lanka's first curated non-fungible token digital art exhibition, The Brilliant Resilient by 15 Sri Lankan artists who are responding to the social, political and economic challenges in a completely new space. The exhibition, curated by Kesara Ratnavibhushana, is being hosted on the Upside Space, an international digital platform which is the brainchild of Lisa Ray, a trailblazing award-winning actress whose unconventional issue-based roles, including in Water and the World Unseen, have made her iconic. An award-winning writer too, whose memoirs were prompted when she was diagnosed with a rare blood cancer. A model for leading Indian brands including Lakme. She's a TV host, a motivational speaker, activist and an entrepreneur, Lisa is an art aficionado who together with her partner, art professional and philanthropist Aisha Khan showcases digital art from South Asia, Southeast Asia and the Middle East. Lisa, welcome to Sri Lanka and Thank lovely you. to have you on our show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Now, the non-fungible token space is new to Sri Lanka. In fact, mm -hmm. it's very new to the rest of the world as well. Very briefly, what does NFT do? for the art world. In my mind though, however, NFTs of course can be used, it's a new technology, it can be used in many different ways. It can be used with reference to digital art, it can be used in finance, you can fractionalize ownership of properties using NFTs, but when it comes to art, it's very powerful and here's why. In my mind, it is simply a new system of delivery. It's a new way of sharing art, exchanging art, that actually puts creativity and the artist at the center of the entire ecosystem. And that is what's really powerful because with NFTs, we have provenance, we have transparency, we have authenticity, we have something called smart contracts, which means that artists can potentially receive automated royalties off of secondary sales, and they don't have to go around trying to chase someone for their payments, because I know that happens in the traditional art world. So this is actually revolutionary on so many ways. It does not mean, I want to clarify, does not mean that traditional art is dying. I think the two can exist in parallel. Well, and if anything, this is an incredible opportunity and playground for artists 
to extend their practice into, to play with. And also, let's remember that in the digital world or entering the digital world for an artist means that geographical boundaries dissolve, physical boundaries dissolve, and you can access a global audience and global visibility. And that's what I really want to see Sri Lankan artists start to capitalize on. K. Siddharatna Vibhushan is the curator for this exhibition. And in general, why is the upside space curator driven? So first I want to say that Kesra did a brilliant job and that's one of the reasons why I'm here in Colombo right now. Um, the name of his exhibit is The Brilliant Resilient and I think that that beautifully encapsulates the spirit of the Sri Lankan people, uh, particularly during these times. Um, and we are actually right now pre-launch as a platform, but I really wanted to come and support Kesara in a digital exhibition. That means a combination of physical and digital. And sometimes that's the best way in for an audience. You know, you have to sort of see and experience and understand um, the what NFTs can actually accomplish. But it, often it's very useful to see how a physical work is mirroring the digital work. And we are in the process of bridging those two worlds, as I said. We wanted to, again, bridge. As I said, we're sort of bridging also artists with the digital world. We want to bridge the audience also with the artists. And so our curator is an enabler. They're not a gatekeeper, they're enablers. So they actually set the exhibition's curatorial intent. They're the portal into a region. They vet the art. And it's through the curator, you might call them almost art buddies, that our audience is able to really experience and discover new uh, artists, um, new kind of issues and perspectives, and, uh, and really engage with the art of Southeast Asia, South Asia, and the Middle East, because these are the regions that we're spotlighting. You must feel passionate about what you put up on the upside space. Now, what is it about these 15 Sri Lankan artists that moved you? I want to preface this by saying I have a very strong emotional bond with Sri Lanka. I was here, I think, in 2004 for about six months shooting a film called Water in Colombo. And uh, that planted this uh, seed in me of having this you know, being very intrigued by this incredible island nation. Um, I think that, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, really strong art practices come out of times of turmoil and distress. And we all know, of course, that Sri Lanka is just now emerging from a time like that. So I think that what's beautiful about the artists, whether it's uh, Anoma, Anoli Pereira, and many other young and emerging art artists uh, in our exhibition, is a lot of the art is a very immediate response to everything that's been going on recently. So it's really encapsulating that emotional resonance. And on one hand, hope. On the other hand, also the spirit of resistance as well. And I think that's a very potent combination. So thank you, Lisa. Uh, it's been very insightful, actually. I've learned a lot. Um, about a subject I knew very little yeah. about. So thank you for taking me down that path and do enjoy the rest of your stay, which is brief at the moment, but we hope to see you. Spicing up meals and empowering women. That's what I hold in my hands here. Gourmet Twist is a bold female-led startup that packs unique flavor into these jars, be it a dip, a sauce or marinade, or wherever your inner chef's imagination takes you. Here's the woman behind the flavor, Samiti Vikramasinghe on Life in 60. As a brand, Gourmet Twist is all about innovation and creativity, but also um, it's about convenience. Um, every product we launch as a twist has its own twist in terms of uh, a combination of ingredients that works well with a range of recipes. So starting off from meat to seafood to vegetarian items, flavors that sort of ignite one's kitchen imagination to go wild. Um, innovation for us in that sense is not just making some bomb ingredients but also it, it is more about getting our customers excited and sort of getting them to experiment in their own kitchens so who are the twist for 
it is for everybody. Adieu for the moment, but we'll be back next Friday. Enjoy the weekend and do spice it up.